It's crazy to think we're already in 2023. What's going on guys? My name is Trevor and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my top 10 movies of the decade so far from 2020 to now in 2023. I have not seen a 2023 movie yet, but from 2020, 2021, and 2022, I'm giving you the 10 movies I deem to be the best my favorite. This is going to be my list, but I want to know your list down below in the comments. You should also hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Lots more videos coming this week, and this one's going to be a fun one. Before we get into the top 10, I do have a couple honorable mentions. Let's start off with those. So first up, we have Malignant. This is James Wan's horror movie, and I think this is the best horror movie of the decade. We have Tick, Tick, Boom. Lin-Manuel Miranda's first feature-length film starring Andrew Garfield. If you're like a dreamer or you need to be inspired, toss this movie on it just it hits really hard then i have encanto which is my favorite animated movie of the decade i feel like i had to include an animated movie on this list then i have the last duel i think one of the most underrated movies of the decade ridley scott's movie is fantastic starring ben affleck matt damon and adam driver and jody comer this movie is great i'm really shocked it didn't make the list but I'm really, really happy with how my top 10 list turned out. And then also, I have Love and Monsters. This one went completely under the radar. Went like straight to VOD during the pandemic back in 2020. If you haven't seen Love and Monsters, it's a really good, feel-good, heartfelt, post-apocalyptic movie. You heard that right. Post-apocalyptic movie. But it's like a coming-of-age romantic comedy of sorts. I really, really dug Love and Monsters. With that said, let's get into the top 10. So how I deemed all these movies to be in the top 10 was how my experience was with them. So every movie on this list will have a little bit of a story of my experience with them, what made me like them so much, and things of that sort. So first up on this list at number 10 is going to be RRR, Rise, Roar, Revolt. This movie is nothing short of extraordinary. This is my first Hollywood movie, and I had no idea what to expect. I just heard it's one of the best action movies of 2022. And I can 100% agree to that. It is one of the best action movies of 2022. So when I turned this movie on, I had no idea what to expect. It's supposed to be a great action movie. Is it going to live up to that hype? And it surpassed it amongst every level. The action, while at times it is cheesy, is not just insane. And when you see it on screen, it's like so cool. And there's so many jaw-dropping moments. And so many moments you just get chills over your entire body. They have numerous dance numbers, numerous musical numbers. And everything about this movie worked. And this is the fastest three-hour movie I've ever watched. This thing just zoomed by. And I heard this isn't even the best Hollywood movie. And I'm excited to check out other ones. But RRR was one of the best experiences when watching a movie from the comfort of my couch jaw dropped to the floor had so much fun with it at number nine is going to be the harder they fall this is one of my favorite westerns of all time a fantastic cast a fantastic score a fantastic soundtrack and a really good revenge story all make for a really good western in my opinion this is a film by james samuel and you would think that it's a quentin tarantino type western the way it's told and how they use like modern day music in this western i thought that was a really nice touch this movie starring jonathan majors idris elba regina king uh zazie beats the cast goes on and on from there and from start to finish i was invested in this story and i'm a sucker for a good western and this happened to be one of the best westerns i've seen in my entire life and this one might be one of my only hot takes on this entire list because a lot of people were indifferent about the heart of they fall it really worked for me on every level it was another one of those movies i just kind of tossed it on a couple of my friends said yeah it's all right so i tossed it on and I sat up immediately, just so invested in this entire story, the score, the soundtrack, the set design, everything. I just appreciated it, and I've seen this movie four times. I can't wait to go watch it again. At number eight, this trilogy of slasher movies that came out one week apart from one another over on Netflix was a crazy time to be alive back in 2021. It's the Fear Street trilogy, and I'm including this entire trilogy because you can't watch one of these movies without the other. They literally go hand in hand, and if you watch them all at once, it would just be like a five hour long movie. And that's why I'm counting this as one movie because you have to watch all three of these movies together. And Fear Street was unlike anything I've ever experienced before because I gotta watch the entire trilogy, brand new movies, week after week after week i hope netflix does that again with more fear street movies as they are trying to make more fear street movies these are not only some of the best slasher movies but some of the most unique slasher movies that i've seen in my entire life the first one has lots of scream vibes we also get like stranger things coming of age vibes in there as well there's so many different love stories in this movie that you get attached to these characters and they jump back and forth from way back in the past 1666 to 1978 to 1994 which is the present time of this movie is set 
I love the vibes this movie brings, and my favorite of this trilogy would be Part 2, 1978, starring Sadie Singh. This is a sleepaway camp slash vibe all the way. If you haven't seen the Fury Street movies, do yourself a favor, watch all three of them because they will knock your socks off and from start to finish you will be invested in these movies. I said Malignant was my favorite horror movie of the decade and I'm counting these one as slasher movies. These are my favorite slasher movies of the decade. At number seven, you had to have a couple comic book movies on here and this one's going to be The Batman. All the trailers, all the hype, all the speculation leading up to this movie made this movie what it was. I got to see this one a couple days early. It was one of the best theater experiences I've had this decade and this entire movie from start to finish was a dark, almost character study of the character of Batman, and it was a Batman detective story, and that's what I love the most about it. Robert Pattinson is fantastic in this role. He's my favorite Batman. Matt Reeves created my favorite Batman movie, and I thought maybe it would just be hype. Maybe it would go down, but it hasn't. The Batman has risen since the first time I saw it. I always thought, no, it's just part of the hype. I don't really like that movie that much. I do. I'm vengeance. At number six, 2022 Best Picture winner, Coda. This stands for Child of Deaf Adults. I watched this on a plane ride home from Hawaii. I had one of the best vacations of my life, so now I'm going to watch this movie. Did I think it was going to knock my socks off and make me emotional on a flight? I did not. But did it knock my socks off and make me emotional on a flight? It sure did. Coda is one of my favorite Best Picture winners of all time. This is such a heartfelt movie about a kid who's a child of deaf adults who's the only one who can hear in her entire family. So she's had to be basically an adult and a grown-up since she's a very young age. And she's just trying to go out and live her dream and not follow down the steps of her parents and their fish business. She wants to go be a musician. And that is an inspiring movie. And this movie is exactly that. And it really goes off one of my favorite quotes. You can't choose where you come from. You can choose where you go from there. I love this movie from head to toe. It made me cry on a plane. It gave me chills on a plane. And if you haven't seen Kona, this is one of the best heartfelt movies you will ever watch. It got nominated for three Oscars and it won all three Oscars, rightfully so. Coda is one of my favorite coming of age movies. It's one of my favorite feel good movies. And it's one of my favorite best picture winners. I absolutely love it. Breaking us to the top five. I think we're doing okay so far. I think I got some solid different picks in there. But at number five is going to be Avatar The Way of Water. Some people like to hate on this movie. I will never understand the hate. James Cameron delivered one of the most unique, immersive experiences I've ever experienced in a theater. I got to see this movie twice already. I'm trying to go a third time very soon. Because it's not just the visuals that captivated me. Trust me. I was captivated. I was sucked into this. I had to hold my breath on the movie because I felt like I was there. That's how, that's how immersive this movie was. But I love the Sully's. I love the world of Pandora. And I love what James Cameron is doing with this. I didn't have a problem with the villain. But I feel like the biggest villain in this movie is where from Jake Sully came from. He is not full Navi. So I think that's always been like the biggest villain of this entire franchise. That, that constantly comes to bite him back in the butt. This movie is not only visually stunning, not only has a fantastic score, but it's one of the best movies of 2022. I'm hoping it gets that Best Picture nomination nation and i love the first avatar i think i like avatar the way of water that much more slowly stick together at number four dune after seeing this movie in a theater i don't think i've ever been happier after experiencing a movie because i almost didn't go see it. i almost decided to stay home and watch it on hbo max and i did after i saw it in the theater the very next day seeing this movie in a theater on the biggest screen possible was the only way to experience this movie what Denis Villeneuve created and this world of Dune they call it like Lord of the Rings of Space and that's a very accurate description of this movie I love Timothy Chalamet one of my favorite working actors the day is going to be a huge part in part two but the world they created here was something I was so invested in the world building was fantastic and it didn't have a lot of action because it didn't need it I think the only downplay of this movie is the marketing for it. They didn't get a lot of trailers, they didn't get a lot of marketing out there, and the trailers they gave us were not the best. And I feel like that kind of pushed away a lot of the crowd. I was one of like eight people in my theater, but I was smiling ear to ear. And this is one of those few movies that when I saw it, it made me think, this is why I love movies. This is why we go to the movies. And number three, Spider-Man No Way Home. I went on a phase for a little while. Started hating on this movie. I've seen it like eight times. How can I hate on this movie? And the Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time. Seeing the three live action Spider-Man on screen together was something I would cherish forever. And I feel like we all kind of took advantage of because the hype was there. It was all spoiled. It's all going to happen. And at this point, you were just waiting for them to show up. But they had so many other great things in there from all the other villains showing up in the movie. From how deteriorated Tom Holland's Peter Parker became in this movie, losing Aunt May, possibly losing his best friends, losing the love of his life. They, he lost everything in this movie it's one of the few mcu movies that actually gets me choked up because at the end of this he has a whole speech to tell mj and he just can't because he realizes their lives are probably better without him in it and that is a hard thing to swallow and that's why i love knowing home we're coming down to the wire at number two 
Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. The Gentleman is one of my top five favorite movies of all time, rightfully so. I love a good almost whodunit, which The Gentleman kind of is. I really love a good like gangster mobster movie, and The Gentleman is exactly that. You have a star-studded cast in here, Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnam, Henry Golding, Hugh Grant. This movie they in the cast just goes on, and it's just a very different movie, and that's why Guy Ritchie is one of my favorite filmmakers, because he just makes a movie that he wants to make, and when I say it's a whodunit, it's because this whole movie is getting like narrated over, essentially, like a lot of Guy Ritchie movies do, and at the end of it, all the pieces really start falling together. When the truth comes out at the end, they do almost a rewind of the movie, and they kind of go back into these big scenes that like really kind of things we weren't paying attention to that led up to the end. That's why I call it a whodunit of sorts. A great cast, a great script, and one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. And we're here. Number one favorite movie of the decade is Top Gun Maverick. This is not only my favorite movie of the decade, this is damn near my favorite movie of all time. I've seen it eight times and counting and it came out less than a year ago. This is the reason you go to the movies, this is the reason you watch movies, and this is a movie I will cherish forever and I will show to my kids and my grandkids and my cousins and my neighbors and my dogs and my future dogs and everyone. What Tom Cruise and his cast brought together is nothing short of extraordinary. They took like six months of flight training to learn how to fly these jets. Tom Cruise is like flying a jet around where does that happen other than Top Gun Maverick? The first Top Gun from the 70s is a movie I absolutely love. But Top Gun Maverick is just that much better on every level. It's the ultimate summer movie. It's the ultimate movie. And it's my favorite movie of the decade so far. Honestly, I don't think anything's going to pass it. Let me know your favorite movies of the decade so far. It's a lot of fun to do. Maybe we'll do this every year as the more movies keep coming out. Let me know your top 10 down below in the comments section. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Lots more videos coming the rest of this week. Lots to do. Such a little time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.